You're right, that doesn't look like my usual style of beer. There's a reason for that. I got this package from Simple Electronics, uh, who's another guy that's got an electronics YouTube channel. He's over in Ontario, as you can see from the address here. He sent me a package, so I figured I'd have a beer from his neighborhood. This is Lug Tread uh, from Bose Brewing in, where are they, uh, Van Leek Hill, Ontario, which is the closest beer I could find uh, to Ottawa. So that's what this is about. Not bad. Um, a little more mild than I'm used to, but it's not a bad beer. I can definitely drink that in the summer. So this box, this box has a kit that he put together in it. Uh, on his channel, he did uh, did an exercise designing a circuit slightly modified from a very standard circuit and then went through the whole process of uh, using CAD tools to do the schematic up and then writing or, um, designing a board, having the board printed by one of those uh, uh, quick PCB print companies that you've heard advertising all over everybody's channels. Um, but not here because I'm not doing sponsorships. Um, but here is the kit that he put together. He, he made up, I think half a dozen of them. Um, sent me one, sent one, sent a couple of other people. One of them he sent to another YouTuber, another small channel called junk from work. I'm not exactly sure where he is. I think he's on the West coast. Um, anyways, he's, uh, he does like automotive electronics usually and tools and stuff like that. So, um, I'll put links down in the, down below to, uh, to Simple Electronics and his, his design and build of this thing. Um, he's got a playlist, so I'll, I'll link to that. Actually, I'll probably link to that up there. And Junk From Work, I'll link to him down in the description to his, uh, to his live stream where he threw this thing together. Um, and just generally dicked around as you do on a live stream. So, what do we have? We have a note, and we have the kit. Probably better packaged coming from Ontario than most of the stuff that I get from China. Then again, he spent a ridiculous amount on postage for this, because that's just what Canada Post does. Uh, so, we have all of the components in here, and the board, which looks like a fairly nice little board, actually. And we have a note. Hang on. The note has a schematic, which is nice. Uh, and do, 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 do. his general explanation. Circuit's designed for 12 volts. MOSFET's rated for 6 amps. But, and then a little personalized note. Hang on. Okay. Uh, cool little note. Nothing too, uh, too personal on there. So... There we go. Let's uh, let's just get into this kit though. And here's just a freeze frame of the schematic from his video, um, which is a little bit easier to see than on that paper, just with my lights and stuff. But it's a fairly standard 555 circuit. Um, these two diodes with their 0.6 voltage drop, and wherever this thing is set between the two, between the charge and discharge, is going to adjust the threshold. And thus cause the uh, PWM thing to happen. I'm just doing this from memory, so I may be a little bit off. But he goes through it and explains it in big detail in the uh, in his uh, playlist. So if you want to know more, check that out, or you know, do what what any of us would have done and go and check the Wikipedia article. Anyway, um, so on the output pin three, he's driving the gate of MOSFET. So you can drive something fairly big. And I think he said it can go up to like six amps with a caveat. So you can drive lights or whatever you want on that motor speed control. Sure. Um, he's got it set up as a 12 volt circuit. Um, 12 volts connected over here. And then uh, 0.01 and 470 microfarad uh, for decoupling slash power supply smoothing. Nice, simple little circuit. And it shouldn't take that long to uh, to build it, actually, as long as they don't screw things up. Now I know somebody's going to say, "How come you don't have one of those uh, one of those brass shavings things?" I do. 
I like this. I'm old. I'm used to this. But I may poke the thing into that every once in a while just to get an extra clean. Anyway, turn that on and get that warmed up. While that's happening, let's pull this guy out. Dump everything randomly on the board. So, uh, he mentioned in the note that uh, there was a bit of an error on the board surrounding the potentiometer footprint, which is down here. What happened, as he explains in his video, is he laid this out as 0.1 um, headers, header, or 0.1 pitch, the same as uh, breadboards and things. However, when the pots showed up, they are breadboard friendly, but they're 0.2 pitch. They hit every second one. So he's done this. He's tacked on um, some header pins to make it fit. Okay. Good bodge. Not a bad workaround at all. Uh, other than that, what do we have in the kit here? We have the hardware for the pot. Probably don't need that. A couple of screw terminals. There's the filtering capacitor. There's the timing capacitors. That's probably 104. Yeah, that's going to be the other. What are these two guys? That one's 103. Oh, okay. So the two 104s are these ones here. That's the 103. That's the big electrolytic. Uh, we have the MOSFET, we have two diodes, these two diodes here, and what else are we going to find? A 1K and a 10K resistor. That one is 10K, the one that doesn't have the little paper tabs on it, and that one is the 1K, the one that's got the paper tabs on it. Okay, remember that for long enough to not screw it up. Okay, so that's all the components in this. It's a really simple circuit, and... I mean, good on him. The 555 circuit is a good choice for um, for a first board to put together. That came out pretty well. Ah, ha, ha. He's got his advertisement in there. Cool. Um, that's interesting. Load and ground. Oh, that's interesting. The spokes are on the plus 12 volt side. So this isn't the ground plane, this is a voltage plane. And on the back, there's the ground pin there. That one. Okay, so this is a ground plane on the back. And a VCC plane on the front. Cute. That doesn't, I don't see that that often. I mean, it may happen more, than, uh, more often than I think, but I don't know. Um, anyway, so there's the two diodes. There's the pot, 555, the 1K, the 10K. Nice uh, gate, drain, and source labeled there. And then those two capacitors. Cool. What does he say on the back here? Thank you for your support. Just because it is an old school circuit, I'm going to use the helping hands. So, where shall we start? Um... Typically, I like to go chip last because it's the most fragile thing, even though the 555 isn't that fragile. Let's put the electrolytic in just because it's biggest. So negative goes up to that side. See the big blob of white on the symbol there? Um, plus, I can see the uh, the spokes going off to the positive ground, or the positive plane here. Let's give that a little kinky kink on the back should i do this a whole bunch of things at once sure i'll put these i'll do all the capacitors just give them a little bend not a huge bend i know that offends some people you just have to bend it enough that it'll hold and not so much that uh, your solder blob is going to spew over onto something else Okay, starting with the electrolytic. That solders up nicely. How about the one on the side on the ground plane? Yeah, that takes a little bit more time. And these two little caps. 
Oh yeah. And I kind of messed that one up a little bit. What did I do wrong? Just wasn't paying attention. And then this one again, which goes to the ground plane. Okay, that worked pretty well. I'm gonna use my new cutters for the first project. You gotta be careful to remember not to use these on header pins because that's gonna nick them up again like the old ones were. Okay, that's the capacitors. Oh, there's this other little one here. This one, this capacitor is the other one in the power supply filtering circuitry here. And that, that guy's job is just to uh, clean out any higher frequency crud on the power line. The larger electrolytic will take care of any low, lower frequency AC that happens to be stuck on there causing problems. Or, in this case, not causing problems because the capacitors will take care of it. Okay. Resistors. That one was the 1K. I remember that because it had the paper on it. There goes a nice rough bend. Shrunk into there and I'm just going to bend the leads on the back. You've seen that happen before. And the 10K goes on the other side of the 555. There's, there's a lot of different sort of theories as to what's the best order of operations for a circuit board. A lot of guys say do the, uh, do the small stuff first, the low profile stuff first, and then do the, the tall and big and in the way stuff. Why didn't that work? I didn't get down in there with my iron. And there is value to doing things in that order. Um, sometimes it makes sense. Especially if one thing gets in the way of something else. And I'll often do that if there is something like that happening. Note that I'm keeping the, uh, the pot and the MOSFET for later. Now then, I have committed a sin according to some people have cut through the solder which apparently is a bad idea because you'll shock the component and damage it as a bloody resistor relax uh so what's next let's put the two diodes in are they both the same they ought to be mm -hmm. yep those are both 4000 ones okay just drop them in. Um, he's got the band ends marked, so that's real easy. Get in. Get in. So, yeah, the uh, order of operations. So, again, I if there isn't any real mechanical reason to go with one or the other order of operations I tend to just go with the least fragile least possibly damaged by heat things first and the most likely to be damaged by heat or static or screwing around things last which usually means leaving the chip to last until unless it goes in a socket and again the 555 Especially the non uh, CMOS, non, uh, yeah, the non CMOS ones are fairly robust. Even the CMOS ones these days are. But again, being old school, back in the day, CMOS was considered expensive and fragile. Okay, so far so good. What else we got here? Um, let's put those in. Okay, uh, there's something I would change if I was doing this board later. Not really a criticism, just an observation. I would make sure that the power and ground designations aren't obscured by the connector. Because when you're connecting it up later, 
especially if it's a long time later, that's going to get in the way and you're not going to be able to tell. Uh, also, so two load, you can see it there from load. That's a little tricky to see. You can sort of see it. Because those things won't hold when I turn this upside down, blue tack or the dollar store equivalent thereof. Now these are going to take a little bit of heat just because they're such big pins and such big pads. But it's still not too much. I mean, we're still relatively small stuff here. This one's going to take the heart and take the most heat because it's on the ground plane. But that still wasn't too bad. Okay, last two things. The MOSFET. So that goes on there. I'm going to give these just a little bit of a bend just to keep them in place. They're a little, a little heavy to do, though. Okay. Why does that keep going out of focus? Uh, and again, these are a little bit bigger, so they're going to take a little bit more heat. Just a second more time, not too much. And then this one's on the ground plane. Clean up the iron. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to take some heat. But not ridiculous amounts. I think I'm going to use my old and busted cutters for this one. They still work. I'm just being a little precious with the new ones here. Okay. What's left on there? Just the chip. Oh, and the pot. Right. So let's just take a pause for a second. So the pot, I could use his bodge, which would work, but I think I'm going to try something else. I have in my accumulation of stuff, some pots, including these little 10 turn ones, which are 50 K and a multi-turn pot and more importantly, 0.1 pitch. So they should drop right in. It's always important to have stuff on hand. You never know when you're going to need it. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I will drop that in that way so I can adjust it from off the side of the board. And here's my blue tack again. Okay, so it's not much of a modification, but it's something. Uh, I don't really want to dig into the circuit board and modify it and hack it apart if I don't have to. And I know the circuit board works because I've seen two different guys assemble it. Yep, just the chip left now. There we go. Uh, as usual, there's the notch marking and the square pad both indicating pin one. The chip itself has the same notch indicating pin one. Just drop that guy in there. Nudge him in a little bit. There we go. And a quick solder job. Okay. And just to be nice to the chip, I'm going to spread the heat around from one corner to the other. Take my time. Give the iron a bit of a clean. How come that one doesn't feel like it's all the way through? Oh! <laughs> you dummy. <sighs> okay.
Okay, there got the chip pried up. Now I can get in there with my pliers and get the pins more or less lined up like they're supposed to be. And now I want to suck those holes dry a little bit more. I've got them pretty good, but I want to get them right cleaned out so that I can put that back in there. So I'm going to be heating it up and eventually. Okay, there I heard it click. Okay, there we go. They're all through now. Huh, a little tense, but that's just the kind of crap you have to sometimes deal with when you're doing repairs. Um, pulling out chips without necessarily damaging them because you're not quite sure if they're good or bad. Or if something's broken or whatever. It's a little bit tedious and time consuming. But it's not that hard to do with a bit of practice. Entirely my screw up. Sorry, man. Making your kit look like crap. It's my fault. So, now that I've got everything soldered and all the pins actually in their holes, and hopefully I didn't break anything or burn the board out. Although, all the abuse that I put this thing to, that's a testament to this. Is it FR4? I think it is. Uh, Circuit board material, um, the fiberglassy stuff, I didn't destroy the board. Woohoo! So now we'll bring in some of the alcohol of the non drinking variety here and just clean up the flux on this board because I made such a mess of it. Try and make it look a little bit presentable. This is just a little bristle brush. It's Think of it as a heavy-duty toothbrush, right? That's that's all that's really going on here. I'm just getting all the excess flux off here, which is something I know other people have uh, mentioned in previous kit builds of mine. Clean up your flux. Yeah, it's boring to watch on camera. That's why I don't normally show it to you. Anyway, let's see what this looks like now. That's not too bad. It's a little bit, little blob of flux there. So I did actually damage the pad a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's just a mechanical anchor pad on this side. It's this side where it's connected to the plane. So I think I should be ready to try and power this thing up and see if it works. Okay, um, I've got myself a few things hooked up here. I've got an LED with a resistor in series with it just so I don't blow it up or destroy anything. It shouldn't be too high a current draw, but uh, just make sure anyway. That 12 volts on the power supply. And I got it current limited at just shy of 200 milliamps. So hopefully if things go horribly wrong, they don't go horribly wrong. Power there, power there. Now I don't know where that pot is set to. So let's see what happens when we turn that on. Ooh, dim LED. Let's uh, do some adjusting of this here potentiometer. We should see that thing start ramping up. Can you see that? I can see it getting brighter. And I can also see the current going up on the power supply. We're at 40 milliamps right now. And that's not too bad. Is anything getting hot? Nope. I think you guys can see that getting brighter, can't you? That's one downside with using the multi-turn pot. Is that you get a reef on it for hours to get to the end. That's getting pretty close to max brightness. 60, 62 milliamps, 63 milliamps. Yeah, so that's the top. That's pretty good. And then of course we can spin it down using this screwdriver here because it's got the uh, nice little spinny bearing on the end of it. And you can see, I think, the LED dimming a little bit. 
yeah, there it's just down to like that. Let's pull out the cheesy scope and uh, just take a quick peek at this thing. Oh, one moment, please. All right, here we go. As you can see, the duty cycle is pretty much nothing here. It can't even keep up with it. Uh, we're doing 24 milliamps, and that is super duper dim. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can read the scope better. I'll just tell you what's happening off screen. I'll actually put that in there maybe. So, we start bringing the brightness up. And you can see the PWM increasing. For some reason, this is showing upside down. That's just because of this cheap little scope. So 75%, actually it's 25%, right? Uh, so we'll keep spinning it up. I don't know why that's showing upside down. So there is pretty much, there's 50% duty cycle. We're drawing 43 milliamps into the LED. And it's kind of half bright. So now we'll just keep cranking on this thing. You can see the duty cycles coming up to pretty much 100%. And again, there's not enough there for it to uh, glom onto it. It just thinks it's random spikes, and that's drawing 64 milliamps. So it works exactly how we thought it should, which is good. I never had any doubts at all in either his engineering or, well, I had some doubts in my assembly. So what is the frequency that he's got? So yeah, here we are back at about 50, 50-ish uh, percent duty cycle. Yeah, 941 hertz. Okay. So 1K is not a bad number for, for doing LED dimming and stuff. As you can see, there's no observable flicker there. Uh, partly because that's not an even division of my uh, frame rate. And... Partly because it's just too fast anyways. So I'm pretty pleased with that. With this, uh, with this little kit that was put together by, uh, by Simple Electronics. He did a good job of it. I almost killed it, but managed to rescue it. I am pleased. Thanks, uh, thanks to Simple Electronics for sending me this kit to play with. That was fun. That was... Even even fixing my screw up was was fun experience. I haven't uh, done a lot of board level repair lately. I used to do an awful lot of it back like decades ago, but I'm a little out of practice, as you could probably observe. Um, so yeah, thanks to him for sending that out. Uh, thanks to uh, Junk from Work for beating me to uh, building this kit. Um, but he had a he had a fun little uh, live stream where he put his together. That was that was pretty cool. And thanks to all you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, now go check out those other guys' videos. The links will be down in the description. Um, and uh, if you've got anything to say about this, uh, and I'm sure somebody's going to say something about my soldering technique, uh, feel free. Jump down in the comments. I'll uh, I'll chat with you down there. Thanks for watching. Bye.